Though some might argue that video games are themselves a colossal waste of time, games at their best can be a relaxing and enriching pastime which offers up experiences that no other medium can. And then there are those games that absolutely, unquivocally have no respect at all for your free time. Not all wasted time is a bad thing, but in case of these 10 examples, it's absolutely in the service of tedious busy work. I am Kirsten from What Culture Gaming, and these are 10 secret ways video games totally waste your time. Number 10, forced walking sections. One of the more common gaming tropes to emerge in the last decade or so is the forced walk. That is a typically on rail sequence in which the player is forced to walk slowly through a linear area while a support character dumps a heap of exposition on their lap. Now the forced walking section isn't always a total waste of time. In fact, it can give players a welcome breather between intense combat sections, but it does prove immensely frustrating when players just want to get down to business. Some of the more egregious offenders include Gears of War, Assassin's Creed and Red Dead Redemption 2, just to name a few. While these sequences are usually infrequent enough, they nevertheless feel like an arbitrary, unnecessary attempt to hold the player back, bringing the game's momentum to a literal slow crawl in the process. When repeated numerous times over the course of a 10 to 20 hour campaign, it can amount to a decent chunk of time wasted, all because the devs couldn't find a more interesting or creative way to unfurl the plot. Number 9, Intentionally Clumsy Controls There's a lot to be said for games which allow you to navigate their world with a snappy fluidity. The wonderfully dynamic traversal in the recent The Last of Us Part 2 is an outstanding example of that for one. But sometimes, in a misguided quest to forge realistic gameplay, games go in the totally opposite direction, forcing players to deal with a slow, lumbering character whose wading through treacle movements become a genuine chore to deal with. There is no better example of this than Red Dead Redemption 2, a game designed to make players feel the enormity of even the smallest movement, often to its detriment. This is especially frustrating when navigating building interiors, whereby the ludicrously fiddly controls can make you get caught on objects all turned around entirely, ensuring even the most basic actions feel like a bit of a chore. With the games clocking in at a beefy 30 hours, it's fair to say that a decent fraction of that playtime is a result of the willfully sluggish, molasses slow movement and controls. Number 8, Excessive Crafting and Grinding Though the loot grind was once upon a time only reserved for RPGs, the loot hoovering loop in which players are encouraged to tirelessly scour the environment for every last piece of shiny scrap is commonplace in most action-centric genres nowadays. With the dollar per hour value of video game at its lowest ever point with players having so many options available to them, publishers desperately want their games to instill a pathological sense of addiction in players, an OCD adult compulsion to keep collecting that ever precious loot with the promise of bigger better weapons. But it's ultimately a pretty sneaky way to avoid creating actual curated content for players, trapping them instead in an addictive cycle of killing mobs, harvesting their remains, rinse and repeat. In broader terms, games like The Last of Us feature totally unnecessary crafting mechanics, and as anyone who has played the sequel will attest, it's easy to spend literally hours searching cupboards and drawers for scrap. As useful as the game's weapon upgrade benches are, having to sit through lengthy, if admittedly gorgeous, animations of Ellie modifying her weapons becomes a real chore after a while. As fun as looting can be, often the trash collecting loop can feel like a superficial attempt to imply a game has greater depth than it does, and in turn staple a few extra hours onto the critical path. Number 7, Unnecessarily Slow Gameplay Speed Though not every game is designed to be played at a breakneck pace, forcing players into needlessly slow, meandering gameplay loops is an easy way to piss them off. Perhaps the most fascinating recent example is turn-based tactics game XCOM 2, a brilliant game which nevertheless received blowback from some fans due to the slow movement speed of the characters and also the irritating pauses between actions. However, one enterprising modder created a highly popular mod for the game called Stop Wasting My Time, which speeds up character movements and removes the aforementioned pauses, while in no way affecting the overall balance. Final Fantasy games are also criticised upon release for their frustratingly slow combat speed and overall emphasis on grinding. However, when each game was eventually remastered, Square Enix decided to include a number of quality of life gameplay modifiers, namely the ability to play the games at three times speed in order to reduce the languor. 
Number six, pointless button prompts. One of the worst trends in modern AAA gaming is the over-reliance on needlessly long context button prompts, whereby players will need to hold down a given button for up to five seconds in order to throw a switch, open a door, pick up an object, or another similarly mundane activity. Recently, the Final Fantasy VII Remake was especially awful for this, filled to the brim with infuriatingly time-consuming press triangle to do the thing prompts, which over the course of its 30-hour story, surely bloated the playtime out considerably. While games can sometimes get away with the excuse that the prompt is an attempt to disguise the loading of a new asset in the background, it's clear that this is hardly always the case. Everyday actions like this need snappy, responsive context cues for the player, rather than infuriatingly time-consuming prompts. Number 5. Bad checkpointing disguised as difficulty one of the greatest things about modern gaming is that death no longer requires players to be thrown back to the very beginning. Well-placed save points and checkpoints are able to minimise the frustration of repetition by ensuring the player loses only a few minutes of their time after dying. And while there are certainly arguments for games with limited saves as part of their core design, the earlier Resident Evil games for starters, in 2020, with each of us having so many media options available, it's tough to advocate for games which willfully enforce relentless trial and error gameplay. In recent times, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order's checkpointing system was wildly complained about for featuring surprisingly sparse meditation spots where players could save their progress. Upon dying, players are returned to this spot and forced to fight their way back through a fleet of respawned enemies, and worse still, deciding to rest at the meditation spot in order to restore your vitals will automatically respawn all the enemies that you just killed in the area. It's a frustrating loop which somewhat discourages players to explore the expansive world by punishing them so egregiously for dying, in turn wasting so much of their time. This seems pretty counterintuitive for a mainstream casual skewing Star Wars game, though for something as openly punishing as Dark Souls, which often forces players to spend many minutes returning to their death site, it's perhaps a more acceptable indulgence. Number 4. Overlong Attack Animations Anyone who's played more than a few Square Enix RPGs can surely appreciate how much they love to pigeonhole indulgently over long attack and summon animations into their games, particularly the Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts series. And nothing quite takes the cake like the original Final Fantasy VII, which with summons like Knights of the Round and Sephiroth's Supernova ability, can force players to sit through cinematic animations lasting around two minutes. And even with the remaster's three times time skip, that's 40 seconds of your life that you won't get back. The last thing any player wants in the heat of a tough battle is to sit through a glorified cutscene, especially if they're fighting an enemy they've lost to several times already. It shows a flabbergasting lack of respect for the player's time, though Square Enix has at least eased up on this nonsense in their more recent games, with Kingdom Hearts 3 allowing players to skip the attraction and link animations, even if many players didn't appear to realise. As cool as these sequences might look the first time, after two or three repetitions, it begins to reek of a developer shoving their hard work in the player's face. Number three, clunky and sluggish user interfaces. One of the most important yet most underappreciated elements of any video game is the user interface design. There's a lot to be said for a snappy, intuitive UI which allows players to quickly prepare for the task ahead and get things in order. But even some of the most acclaimed video games of all time can't manage to offer up fluid, well-designed UIs, as best evidenced by the more recent Fallout games. As neat an idea as it was to use the Pip-Boy as the game's menu from Fallout 3 onward, in reality, the UI has been an absolute time-wasting headache to operate. Navigating the nested menus is more confusing than it should be, but worse than anything, moving from one tab to the next is agonisingly slow, ensuring that you spend way more time fussing over the small details than, you know, actually exploring this expansive world. It's far from the only culprit. The Witcher 3's launch UI was widely complained about until it received a patch, and then Gran Turismo series has touted some of the most infuriatingly obtuse and ugly interfaces of any AAA franchise in history. All this tells us is that UI design is a lot tougher than you might think, and when a game gets it right, you most likely don't even notice, because you're too busy actually playing the game. Number 2. Artificial Progression Much like the aforementioned loot grind, progression was once upon a time reserved largely for RPG games, but after Call of Duty introduced levelling up, unlocks and upgrades in the original Modern Warfare, it quickly became a mainstay of, well pretty much every single video game genre. It's incredibly uncommon nowadays to find a major AAA game which doesn't have some kind of skill tree or comprehensive upgrade system, regardless of whether the game actually needs it or not. 
Multiplayer games in particular shoehorn artificial progression into the central loop in order to keep giving players a dopamine rush every time they hit a new level or unlock a new mod for their weapon. The only intent is to wring more time from players regardless of where the fun is being had. This has been successful enough to the extent that players may actively decree those few multiplayer games which aren't jam-packed with busy work tasks, challenges and so on. Do you remember when people played competitive online games just for fun rather than to get a bigger number next to their name? Number 1. Random Encounters Perhaps the most consistent time-wasting trick in the RPG genre is the inclusion of random encounters, in which players will find themselves waylaid by enemies totally out of nowhere. While more modern RPGs typically allow players to immediately flee from incoming mobs, in decades past, you typically have to wait for the fight to begin and pick the flee option, making the mere feat of escape a mini slog in of itself. Again, looking at you, Final Fantasy. Though there's the argument that random encounters help make exploration more unpredictable and also ensure the player isn't too underleveled as they traverse the world, ultimately these fights often come across as unwanted hurdles thrown in the player's way. Hurdles that inevitably pad out the game's playtime. Thankfully, those aforementioned Final Fantasy remasters came with another nifty gameplay modifier, the ability to disable random encounters entirely. Thank God. And those were the 10 secret ways that video games totally waste your time. I must admit, there is nothing worse than going through a cutscene that you cannot skip while mashing your X or A button dramatically. Just, just let me skip it, please. Please just let me skip it. This is the hundredth time I've seen it, please. But I digress. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to also hit that notification bell to be notified of any new videos coming your way. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from World Culture Gaming and I will see you in the next video.